Well, good afternoon uh, from the Erasmus building in Estek. And we're pleased to report on the visit of Her Majesty Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands and President Napolitano of Italy. Her Majesty just arrived and is being welcomed by a Dutch minister, Maxim Verhagen, and by, by the mayor of Noordwijk, Mr. Locker. She is now being greeted by ESA's Director General, Jean-Jacques Dordain, and by the head of ESTEC, Franco Ongaro. You may recognize our colleague astronauts greeting Queen Beatrix. The president is welcomed by the mayor of Nordwijk, Mr. Locker, by the Queen's Commissioner, Mr. Franzen, and uh, here is uh, Miss Napolitano, First Lady. Now they are greeted by Jean-Jacques Dordain, ESA Director General. The heads of state will now take their seats on the first row in the Erasmus Auditorium. Majesteit, uh, President Napolitano, Mevrouw Napolitano, uh, ministers, excellencies, geachte gasten en collega's. Het is mij een groot honor dat ik ben venuto a Lestek, da parte di tutti i miei colleghi. Your visit also marks an historical moment for Lestek. Uh, it was 50 years ago in 1962, just one year after the flight of Gagarin. Uh, that the committee that funded the European Space Research Organization, later to become ESA, decided to locate ESTEC in the Netherlands and ESRIN in Italy. We are inventing the future. And what I am convinced of is that uh, the future, and especially in Europe, will not be made of uniformity. Uh, the future will be made of expertise. And at ESTEC, you will see that, that there is no uniformity. It's only diversity. It's 21 nationalities working together. And our only common goal is to make the best satellites and the best launcher of the world. Uh, we also have uh, a female astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti. She cannot be here with us today. She's in training, but she would like to share a few thoughts with us. Your Majesty, Signor Presidente, Signora, dear guests. My name is Samantha Cristoforetti, and this is the Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. Uh, ESA decided that um, it would be a good idea to throw us in the wild to test our capabilities to survive in case of a landing uh, not going according to plan. But it was also a great exercise in living with people uh, that we are not familiar with and to spend um, uh, stressful situations together um, uh, together with our colleagues. In this, uh, in this picture I'm in a parabolic flight and uh, my, uh, my instructors are going to twist me around uh, to test, to give me an example of what it's like to be in orbit and uh, challenge our sensory system to understand uh, how uh, being in orbit is completely different from being on the ground and how our brain will have to adapt in order not to, uh, not to feel sick and to be able to, uh, to operate even when we are in orbit. Many, many stories, so I have to put 193 days of space flight in five minutes. We get into our capsule after all this training and uh, the launch from Baikonur uh, in Kazakhstan is of course a very exciting moment, especially for the, for the on viewers because it's uh, very bright, you feel the, 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 the trembling and, uh, and actually it's a very short trip. It's only eight and a half, nine minutes and then you're already in space. Then you're already at say 200, 250 kilometers. Then we check everything and uh, we even live there for two days before we reach the space station. So what do astronauts do on board? Well, you saw all the training, and, uh, but on board, uh, the major thing is, of course, trying to get science done. I had 55 experiments, but to be, able, to be able to do all that science, you need maintenance, you need cleaning, you need repairs, and that's also things that the astronauts do. Yeah, and then after 193 days, it was time uh, to go back. I didn't want to go back. I thought half a year was long, but once you live there, it's a very nice place to be. Uh, it was a very successful flight. We had 55 experiments, they all went well. Uh, so now it's up to the scientists to analyze all the results. It was good for Europe, good for young people. Uh, and uh, of course, it was a very beautiful experience as well. 
Your Majesty, Mr. President, uh, may I invite you to continue the tour in the High Bay with some of the ESA activities? First uh, presentation in the Erasmus High Bay is given by our colleagues responsible for the Vega launch vehicle. Presenting now is Stefano Bianchi, the Vega program manager. Vega is a transporter of satellites in the one ton class. The uh, maiden flight happened uh, last February. It was a successful demonstration flight. The next demonstration has to do with observing the Earth from space. President Napolitano with the First Lady are now listening to the presentation by our ESA colleague Guido Levrini and he is illustrating the importance of using radar to observe the Earth from space using a special technique called radar interferometry one can detect very small movements of the ground and can help with the monitoring of the land slides a phenomenon that uh, Italy unfortunately has experienced our guests are now moving on to the third station where they are welcomed by Monica Talevi Monica works for the ESA Education and Knowledge Management Office and uh, she presents uh, ESA's mission inspiring the younger generation towards science and technology and how this work is targeting all ages from primary schools to university students. Now they're moving on to the fourth station which has to do with planet Mars. The heads of state have been greeted by Paulina Reisi who works for ESA's uh, Science and Robotic Exploration Directorate. And Paulina is explaining that Europe went to Mars for the first time in 2004 with Mars Express. That mission is still operating today and was able to perform the first direct detection of frozen water on the planet's surface. And Paulina is uh, also presenting the future of European exploration of Mars with the ExoMars mission. President Napolitano is greeting some young colleagues who work in other ESA programs. Some other colleagues work for IRIS, an interesting project in air traffic management in collaboration with the European Union. IRIS uh, will replace the current telecommunication channels between aircraft and ground controllers, allowing pilots to send data and receive data from all over the world and making air traffic uh, safer. At this station, the heads of state are uh, briefed by Andre Kuipers on the benefits of space technology transfer and their applications in other areas of, of industry. He's illustrating an, inst an instrument that is used to measure the humidity of the soil, the soil moisture and that was developed for ESA satellites but can now be used also on board aircraft and on board ground vehicles. President Napolitano is signing the Golden Book.
Queen Beatrix. Saying goodbye to to Luca Palmitano, to Franco Ongaro, to Jean-Jacques Dordain. And we hope to see our high-level visitors soon again at one of the European Space Agency establishments.